welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. I want to introduce you to somebody. You know, if you'd have asked me about Lynn uh, a number of years ago, Lynn, and, and, I'll, and I'll give you everything about who she is, but you're going to hear about who she is. But if you'd have asked me about the following, medical intuitive Lynn Waldrop, medical intuitive known as the body ch channel, energetically dives into the body of her clients, right? All over the world, body talks. This is what I would tell you. Now she's been doing this 30 years of energy work. So she is, in my opinion, considered on the forefront of this. And I know that, I know that to be true. And how do I know it? And how do I know about the importance of what a medical intuitive is and what a medical intuitive does? Well, in Lynn's case, she's been called a medical intuitive on steroids. Now, why would somebody get that name? And I'm going to tell you why right now. See, because if I'd have met Lynn in 2004, let's just say that, if I'd have met her right around there, six months after saying yes to the show, I now understand much more about it. And my body, literally my cells, stopped working. That's what they told me, like the people. They said, okay, your cells stopped working. And that went on for 10 years. But along the way, after many, many conversations with many, many doctors from many, many walks of life, if you're lucky, you happen to be directed to a medical intuitive. And if you are directed to a medical intuitive, one, in my case, I was able to save my life. Two, I was able, able to understand the underpinnings and root causes of so many things that I had no clue. And three, as the skeptic that I was, I trusted the people that I was in front of. And off I went on a journey. And I met people in the industry. I met people. The show direction changed because of that illness, because of my journey. And it took me a while because I didn't know what I didn't know. But when you work with someone and you understand at some level that there's something that they're providing you with that you couldn't get from anywhere else. You step in the world of awedom. That means you're in awe. The other thing it is meant for me, and Lynn will talk about this because this is her journey. This is what she does. You enter a realm. And for me, it was out of desperation where none of the drugs were working. Nothing was happening properly. I couldn't walk. I was in pain throughout my body. I didn't understand it, and then I decided I didn't need it, need to understand it, and I needed to trust. Today's show is clear your issues in the tissues with Lynn, and that is something that I honestly now say I'm not any more knowledgeable. That's why she's here, but I'm a lot more aware. Lynn, it's great to have you. Welcome. Thank, thank you so much for having me back. Look. Whether you're a skeptic or not, I think that we have moved the needle a little bit. I want to believe, I want to believe, I want to believe we've moved the needle a little bit from 2004. And what I mean by move the needle a little bit, right? Okay, so here's where we are with the belief about something. And then we go back over here with, oh, that's like, I don't can't believe that. This is my own personal story. Can't believe that. And then... There comes a point in time, G G Dr. Jean Houston, um, and I got help from Jean, Dr. Jean Houston, Donna Eden, and Dr. Angela Sarian, who became one of my mentor before she passed. And, and I remember this like it was yesterday. 
but I had no idea how they became the people they became. And I think it's important for people to really walk with you now, to walk with you and understand how you got to be the medical intuitive on steroids. I didn't call you that. Somebody else did. But let's talk about your journey. Let's talk about what happened in your life to have you be so dedicated and committed and help so many people understand something that they can't see. You know, I've had so many mentors in my life. I've been really blessed in that arena. And they've come from all over. My grandmother used to take me to a park and I would talk to all the people in the park. And unbeknownst to me at the time, I was talking to all the dead people in the park. And grandma would say, remember, you know, Lenny, what, what, who were you talking to? What were your conversations? I'm like, you're, you're right here, grandma. What do you mean? What were my conversations? She's like, remember, you can't tell anybody about this. They won't understand. You know, I had a, a friend whose grandmother was ill and that was really probably the, one of the biggest pieces. Um, she fell ill and asked me to see if I could uh, find out what was wrong with her. I had never done anything on that scale before. And so I meditated back then. I don't necessarily do it that way anymore, but went and saw her in Pittsburgh and I was in Atlanta. So I was 750 miles away and sitting in a chair next to her in the hospital room. And she would just take a deep breath. And it was like, I turned into a vapor and she would just breathe me in through all her body systems and then spit me back out. And when we were done, I said my goodbyes and woke up in my house three days later and had 15 books of information that I gave to my friend in terms of what can you do to figure out what's wrong with her grandmother. Um, but even after that, I had, I worked and, and some of my friends and fellow employees dropped me off at a lady's house and said, I thought we were going out to dinner and they just dumped me at some lady's house. And they said, go in, take this class. You'll learn a lot because I was kind of doubting, you know, uh, the gifts and it was a psychic development class. And so everybody was sitting in their chairs across from each other and we'd hold each other's hands and somebody would think of, you know, a bus, a book or whatever, and you had to know what it was. And so I got all those right. And then she takes you into a room and says, here, read this person. And I'm like, you haven't taught us anything yet. How am I supposed to read them? And she said, literally just whatever you get, tell the person. And so I, I had this vision of a martini glass and the woman was on a floaty in this martini glass and the, and she's just having a good time, just laying there and it's sunny and beautiful. And then all of a sudden it turns into this dark cloud and, and the waves just are now like an ocean ready to dump her into the ocean and she can barely hold on and she's crying and upset. And I'm telling this woman this, and I said, I don't know what I'm talking about. And she jumped up crying and went screaming out of the room. And my mentor, Joyce Reynolds came in and she said, what did you tell her? And I told her, and she said, what you don't know is that she is an alcoholic. A martini is her drink and she's three days sober. And the first thing she said when she came in was she was being just terrorized by the desire for alcohol. So it was all different kinds of stories like that, that just kept piling up and piling up. Yeah. You know, look, I don't know if I've told you this, Lynn, but I was so excited to have you on today for a couple of reasons. One is I have, I have tried, I've tried over the 20, this is my 20th year, right? That I'm doing this. Congrats. And, yeah. No kidding. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. most people said to me, you, tw we give you 20 minutes. So here, here's what was pointed out to me. And this is something I think you're going to relate to. What was pointed out to me by a publicist I've known for 20 years. I didn't know this. And she said to me, you know, Pat, you don't know this, but here's the deal. 20 years ago, when I went around, I tried to get my best-selling author to do a show on every network in the United States. Nobody would interview him because the show was, the, the book had the word mindset in it. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, you know, Gail, I don't know that I would have if I wasn't on the journey that I was on. But I was on a journey where there were some things that I didn't understand, but I wanted to know more of. This is an area right here that we're hearing more and more about. I want to ask you, what was it like 30 years ago if I was Lynn? And mm -hmm. what it, and 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 so, so has it changed for you? <laughs> well, even 10 years ago, you know, I, I thought that I mean, 10 years ago, I was still really only working on people in 
I guess, the metaphysical community, um, the people who believed in mindset and more. But it is so changed in the last 10 years. It's crazy. So now I'll get people that have just heard of me and, and it, 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 you know, they have some illness, they've been to doctors, the doctors can't figure it out, or they've tried everything. They've tried all these medications. It's not working. You know, what can they do different? So people that are just the normal everyday person, um, I have no problem drawing in these days, which that was a big surprise to me. I never, ever thought I'd break through that glass ceiling. Yeah. And you know, the reason that I'm asking you about it is because even with my own journey and my own personal, you know, movement forward in things, what I remember is that I remember once upon a time that I was just a curious person. And then I moved from being a curious person to living my life in a different way. And this was one of the most important ways. Um, I don't know that I, 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 I've thought about this and I, and I will tell people uh, I've said it before. I did not think I'd be alive today if I was not in contact with medical intuitives, right? And that just, I don't like to put people on the same boat, but if I was not put in, in front of people that had something that had a skill, a talent like you <laughs> very early on, I wouldn't have found a solution in the traditional ways. Now that was 20 years ago. I don't, I, I know I would not be alive today. But a lot of people, even if I get mainstream people, it's usually because I've maybe had a session with somebody that they know and have helped them. So they're like, you know, what, what's it going to hurt to try? You've tried everything else. What's it going to hurt to try this one last thing to see if it'll work for you? Yeah. But so you it, it, it still comes from, it, it you know, from around the corner. <laughs> it does. But, you know, there's something that you do that's different. And there's something I did. You know, I went on, I just do my research. I did, I've collected a lot of information, but so do you. And yeah. I think that's really what sets you apart in so many ways. And people don't know that, um, that that has been your approach to this. Incredible amounts of research, right? Yeah, I do crazy amounts of research. So I do a lot of medical research where um, <clears throat> something that I haven't worked on before, a new client comes in with something different. That, that and it doesn't even have to be a different diagnosis. It can just be a different energy about that disease. And so I will do medical research, but I'll also pull in millions of bodies that have that particular issue and talk with those bodies to see what's causing it, give me more information, and also to check and see where does that go back to the medical research and where do they have it right? And where do they have it wrong? So it'll literally go, okay, let's go down to here. Oh, once we get to this paragraph, that's where they go off the rails. So it will tell me where that science is incorrect. Yeah. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I was on a mission, but the advantage that I probably had is I was doing 14 hours of airtime then and I was on five days a week and some weekends, and I shifted the direction of the show from just this fun crust busting show to a show that was positive centric, that had to do with wellness, well being, body, mind, spirit. And boy, I was not the expert. I'll tell you what I was, though. I was curious as all get out. I was curious. I wanted but see, to, to me, that's the key. I don't consider myself an expert of anything either. <laughs> I'm just the detective and I'm just so curious about everything. And, you know, I, every day I learn something from my clients. I learn something from their bodies and I sit there and go, okay, I got to in go investigate this one more because there was just something different about that particular person, that particular problem in that person. And I just, I, I'm hungry for the information. Yeah. I mean, Part of this too is coming from both that research perspective, but also you you work with people every day. You know, you're in this world where you see what people are coming to the forefront with or what they're not coming to the forefront with or how they're showing up and what they're looking for. And so today, you know, we're talking about how to clear your issues in the tissues. And I remember the first time that was said to me and it was said to me, I can't remember the year, but it was said to me by Carolyn Mace, kind of very smarty, like at me one day in a show. And I never understood it 
until I went on a path. How much of this are really tissue issues that we are really not cleaning up? Oh, it, it, inflammation is the root of pretty much all disease. So it's really about <clears throat> what's creating that inflammation. What are all the different ways that that can be created? You know, and you mentioned how things change. Like right now, for some reason, I don't know what's in the air, what's in the water, but there is something that's hitting like 90% or more of my clients, including myself, where we are all coming up super magnesium deficient. I've never hit this before. So it's, wow. it's definitely something that's happening because literally it's just in mass quantities. And so all of a sudden people are having eye twitches or they're having, you know, leg cramps. And I mean, even cr I had a cramp in the ab muscle, one of the, uh, one of the muscles in your abdominals, like who gets a cramp there? I mean, really bizarre stuff when it comes to magnesium, you can have heart palpitations, a lot of people with that issue too. So this is just something that's coming along all of a sudden. Yeah. That wasn't there. Yeah. Is that, is a uh, heart palpitation, is that like AFib? Heart palpitations? It can be, but sometimes it's just literally uh, you like skip a beat. You can kind of just exactly. feel a little flutter, yeah. you know? It's so funny you're bringing that up because I went through a period, oh my gosh, it had to be maybe six or eight months ago. And cramps, I blamed it on my sport, but it was unusual. It was crazy. It was like, I can't even... Uh, okay, my toes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And most people go to potassium. They think, oh, I need to eat a banana. But oh. this isn't a potassium problem. This one's a magnesium problem. And it affects a lot more than just cramping. And that's my concern. So what do you do with that, Lynn? I mean, other than talk about this now, because there are many people, you, there are many people out there that are listening to this, but everybody out there understands what cramping feels like. But we cannot make the switch. We can't, you know, we don't know how to make the switch between, a, you know, cramping. And I mean, not little cramping. I mean, seriously cramping. Like you're going trying to sleep yeah. at night, right? Yeah. But you've been helping them understand what that's about. And of course, there's a remedy for it. And once people follow that pathway, there's a level of now trust and information but what's really important too is, is it all related to the environment from where you sit or are there other things emotionally? Cause I think where I'm, where I'm sitting, I, I can, I do a live call in show and I can feel the emotion of the callers one right after the other. I could just feel it. And I've been doing this 20 years and I've, I've gotten listeners through the worst economic downturn. And right now the sense of it, like right on the edge. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, thought, I call them TFEs, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. They drive a lot of issues. Um, you know, I had a, I threw my back out going on vacation one time. I was so angry at my husband and I threw my back out and we're trying to go through the airport and I'm limping along, you know, and we get there and I'm still limping along. And I realized, look, Lynn, you're not going to have a vacation. It's a holiday weekend. There's no chiropractor on the Island that's open till next Wednesday. So you're going to spend your entire holiday, like laid up with this back issue. So are you willing to get over what it is? And so one of the biggest things I tell my clients is to be able to learn to start talking and communicating with your body. And I'm like, body, what in the world is the problem here? And how do we change it? And it's like, Lynn, quit being angry at your husband. And the anger is what's creating this back problem. So I did a bunch of work on myself and sure enough, and I finally got out of it and was able to do some stretching out and keep working on it, keep working. But the key was working on that anger. And then I didn't have to have it anymore. And it was kind of a huge, like mind blowing thing because it was like, wow, something that simple could that quickly create such a problem. Cause I couldn't get comfortable laying down, sitting, any standing, any position. It was horrible. And, and look, I think it would be a little bit bizarre for us to think, right, a, a little bit, as much as we don't want to deal with stuff, we don't want to deal with anything, but I love what you talk about. I love that what you're looking at is the interaction, the energy of it all, because for so long, we never did, really. Even 20 years ago, when I was going through this, I was fortunate to find people that literally could help me, not just about this lifetime and past lifetimes. And you know, to learn about that in past traumas. 
it's very easy right now to kind of blow off where people are today, where they were four years ago, but you can't. And so when we think about this, let's talk about beyond emotions. How do past medical situations affect us? Meaning, maybe I went through something 20 years ago. Maybe it affected me in a lot of ways. How does that get transmitted to either today or multi-generationally? There's so many things that just lie dormant in the body. I mean, the herpes strains, uh, medical science will tell you there's eight or nine of them. There's hundreds of them. And they are just some of the most insidious viruses around because they just lay dormant in the body. So think of shingles. Think of even genital herpes. Think of a cold sore. Something happens in your in your world. Usually it's emotional. Something gets you upset, stress, something like that. And it triggers it. It makes all of a sudden that come out of dormancy and it blooms again. Same thing with Epstein-Barr, same thing with Lyme's. All those kind of things can be triggered by that stress. But you have all kinds of just different infections from when we were kids. Um, you have so many toxins in the environment. All of, So all of these things can trigger the latent things that are just laying in there. You got to remember, we have just trillions of buggies in our body. And as long as we have a highly oxygenated environment, that is the key to a healthy, healthy life a highly oxygenated environment. Most people don't know that when people talk about ionized water and alkalized water, that that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about raising your, your alkalinity, getting you out of acidity. Cancer is an acid pocket. Uh, having an autoimmune in a certain area is an acid pocket. Having pancreatitis is an acid pocket. You can't have those in a highly oxygenated environment. So whatever we can do to keep that oxygen level is what we want to do. But like I said, with the anger, somebody could use that and go and, and use that in their body to lower their oxygenation. We, we are so creative. Remember, we're creative beings. We're creating 24 seven. So when we're not creating what we really want, what are we creating? Well, Usually a lot of crap yes, right. <laughs> of all kinds, of all kinds. And you're so right about that. I mean, you, you know, there are a lot of times we talk about the empath for a minute. Let me just say that. But you don't need to be an empath to understand the impact of somebody screaming at you. You really don't. Right. I mean, you, you know, if you're an empath, you pretty much are taken all but about 30 seconds of that before you just you just can't anymore. But here we are today, we don't fully understand in general as society, I don't just mean mainstream, but I'm talking about people in general, don't understand how important it is for us to know these parts of ourselves to then know what we should do. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Before we go, Lynn, what is the best way for people to find out about you? The best way would be our website, which is www.thebodychannel.com. All right. When we come back, and we are taking your calls, 1-800-930-2819. Please give us a call. Check in with us. 1-800, you have a question for Lynn. Let's get the question on the table. When we come back, what we're going to talk about is what happened to me when I heard the phrase tissue issue? What did I do with that? Did I even understand it? It's kind of a little funny story, but now fast forward today, our tissues, what are they? What do they carry? What can we do about it? And if you are registering toxicity, whether it's something in your house or like Lynn said, something in the water, or you got black mold in a closet that you just don't think you have to do something about, I'm not a black mold expert, but I know a little bit about it. When we come back, we're going to talk about what are the types of tissues, how they work, and how each is affected. Thanks to Lynn. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. So welcome back, everybody. Listen, what a great show. Lynn uh, Waldrop's joining me here today. That song, by the way, was created by Nick Johnson at a point in time where we got snagged for playing Clocks as my theme song. And then when I had to go back and get the email, oh my gosh, like I couldn't find it. But every time I think of that song, I think about the time 
in my life where I was. And it was right here. You know, I was on a healing journey. This is, this was it. And that song talks about someday. And, you know, if you ever heard the words to it, you understand that it is a song of hope. You know, it is a song that for me was, I was reminded on a regular basis that, okay, I'm healing. I'm healing. Am I done? Not yet. And so here we are today with Lynn and Lynn, look, this is something you do. Clearing your tissues is what we're going to talk about. We're also getting messages, people that are calling in. Again, please give out your website and then let's talk about those tissue issues. Mm -hmm. It's www.thebonniechannel.com. Yeah. When that was first mentioned to me by, I think it was Carolyn Mace. I just like, okay, like my nose is not running. I mean, literally that was like something I said on air. Like she said to me, you got some tissue issues. And I'm like, okay, cause a little allergy. I mean, that's how, that's where I was back then. But I quickly, I got educated. But in this respect, let's talk about a tissue is not just a tissue. It has layers, doesn't it? Yeah. Everything has layers in the body. I know. Dang it. <laughs> Makes it like a fishing expedition. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But what are they and how do they operate? I mean, it, it'd be great to say, ah, you got a tissue issue and then pff, crazy. But let's talk a little bit about this. As we get callers, we'll bring them on. But give people the lowdown. Like how many, how many layers do we have? Like it's going to take me a million years to get to it. <laughs> so imagine that, you know, the word tissue comes from the French word meaning to weave. Okay. So you have nerves, you have muscle, you have connective tissue. Probably one of the most common things people don't get about connective tissue is your blood, your fat and your lymphatic tissue is also considered connective tissue. People mainly just think of like bone and fashion, things like that. But probably the one that I work on the most these days is that epithelial. Now, I remember back in the day when CSI was first on and I heard epithelial and they were always talking about epithelials. And I was like, what is that? You know, and it was always this elusive tissue. And I thought you only dealt with it in forensic science, you know, but really the COVID world has brought it out so much because it's all your mucous membranes. It's in your gut lining. It's in your uh, reproductive lining. It's in your lung lining. And one of the things that's the most fascinating, not good, but fascinating thing that I found about epithelial tissue is something like 95% of pancreatic cancers come from epithelial tissue, 40% of small cell lung cancer, 96% um, of colorectal, 80% of thyroid cancers. All of this comes from epithelial tissues that line the organs. So this is just like a place that I'm laser focused on when I'm dealing with clients. What happens when people discover, and, and this is really was a big discovery for me. Um, I discovered that it was not gonna be a one size fits all. So that's, that was a good place to start. And that there was something very specific that would, that, are, that each person has something very specific. And isn't that the body of work you do is really, to work in and help people with that, that level of specificity, even if it is taking one layer at a time. Yeah. And I really hate the, the layer approach that just like, uh, I, I just know. don't like it, you know? I know. I, so, I don't know what else to call it. I know. I mean, I try to get through as much as I can in that period of time. And, and I hate even the thought that, you know, the body can only take this much energy. I don't really find a lot of the common things that I hear from other people. Um, uh, like, again, I'm not dissing Eastern medicine whatsoever, but in their theories, the pancreas is about joy or lack of it. If you have problems there, the anger is about, uh, or the liver is about anger. I don't find that. I find people are kind of like their own library. And we each have this like library card catalog over here that, that I have to go to that says, okay, when this person gets angry, they put it in their back and now they have a hard time walking on vacation or this person, when they have this problem, they get gout. So it's, it's just this listing of where we store our stuff. The big point to all of this is stop storing our stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the key? And you know, I'm glad you brought that up. We're going to go right to the phones right now, but I'm glad you brought that up because I had to, I had to discover that I actually was storing stuff up yeah, because we don't, don't realize it. 
Oh, I mean, you think, oh, yeah, I was homeless. That was at age 17. So what? Move on. Oh, hello. No, there's something about that that comes back when? I don't know, some point in time. Who knows? Look, mm -hmm. take a short break here, but not really a break. Colton, can you tell us who our first caller is? Let's let's connect. Here, Pamela, you're on. Hi, Pamela. Welcome to the show. How can we help you today? Hi, thank you for taking my call. I was wondering if Lynn could take a look. I get optic migraines in my right eye, and my right eye will go dim. Could she tell me what the issue in that tissue is? We have an issue with the cranial nerves. Inclu so there's 12 cranial nerves, and so this includes the vagus nerve as well as some of the optic ones. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of doing uh, resetting your back and resetting your spine and nervous system. And a common thing that you can do at home to help yourselves, because a lot of people are having vagus nerve issues. You have to understand the vagus nerve starts at the base of the head and it goes down. It runs so many things in your chest and in your abdomen. It runs your heart rate. It runs your lungs. It runs your digestion, it runs your urinary function. So when that goes out, again, people think, oh, I have a liver problem or I have a colon problem. And they really don't. It's the vagus nerve that has an issue. So one of the things that you can do to help uh, to keep that vagus nerve on track is you take and you turn your head as far as you can to the right with a little bit of a stretch, and then as far as you can to the left with a little bit of a stretch. Now, this time, you're going to keep your head straight, but you're going to look with your eyes as far as you can to the right until you have a body response. Usually, it's a yawn. It's a cough. It's a gasp for air. It can take anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes. And then when you get that, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to look all the way to the left until you get a body response. And now you're going to go back and do your stretch again. And you'll probably notice that your head comfortably will stretch further than it did the last time. So when you have that body response, it's basically triggering and turning on that vagus nerve so that there's more energy now that goes down to your thoracic and abdominal cavity. So this is also in your situation, helping that energy go up and kind of refresh those cranial nerves um, and what's causing your migraines. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, that is fantastic. Wow, thank you. Hey, please let us know how that works out for you too. I'm expecting amazing results there. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about um, what just happened here because this is a beautiful demonstration of, a, a, let's just call it a shorter version of what you might do to help people. But it's what I was talking about earlier. Um, it is entering a world for a lot of people that want relief. They want people, we want relief, whether it's our neck, whether it's our back, whether it's our digestive system whether it's we all of a sudden have this ridiculous chap lip syndrome thing that's taking on that has nothing to do with the lips or a cough that won't go away. We don't want to stay like that, but we don't know where to begin. And so many things today are really nutritional deficiencies. That's why I brought up the magnesium. And I'd like to do another little um, technique if we can to give some, everybody a, um, something yeah. they can do at home. Yeah. But it's, you know, again, we think that the thyroid is just the thyroid and it should run correctly. We don't realize that it needs the liver to function correctly. We don't realize that it's the liver that needs magnesium that makes the iodine work. And so if we don't have magnesium and iodine, the liver is not going to work. It's not going to convert T3 to T4 four and back correctly, which then isn't going to make TSH correctly. So our thyroid will work. But yet when we go to the doctor, the doctor says, oh, your thyroid isn't working correctly. Here, have some medicine. That's right. So you have all of this. So one of the things, and I know there's so many people in my group that they take so many supplements. So I want you guys to try an exercise and I want you to write back to Dr. Pat and I and let us know what happens in your situation. Okay. So I want everybody... I want you to just pull in whatever vitamins and nutrients and minerals your body needs right now. You're just pulling in the energy of that. So it's like we're walking down the vitamin aisle in your favorite store. And as we walk through our bodies, like a sponge going, 
and just pulling all this in. Okay. So I want you to get up in the morning or when you're going to take your supplements. And I want you to do this before you go to take your supplements and see if your body still wants to ingest all the supplements you have. Wow. So this is what I mean when I talk about being best friends with your body and starting to learning how to have a, a communication process with the body. Because yes, I take some supplements, but I don't take like 40. I mean, I have clients who take 40 and 50 of these a day because they're not asking their body. And it literally taxes their body to have more. More is not always better. It has to figure out what to do with all these supplements. So try this exercise and see how that changes your routine. You might find that you need way less because you just take it in energetically. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because what you're really talking about is a level of intuition we all have, a level of intuitiveness, right? But you need to play with it. You do. Like, don't look at it as a job. You're playing with yeah, it. Yeah, have some fun with this. And, you know, it's fascinating when, I mean, you must, you probably were talking about me. Once upon a time, I did have like 40. Like, oh my God, it was like, you know, until finally I, I had to do what you just said. I worked with somebody to do it and we pared it down. But sometimes things are complex. The comment that came in, we have a message that came in from Sarah. It came in on Facebook. And Sarah, thank you for sending your message in. I'm 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 just going to read this if I could. Uh, it's uh, Sarah says I have had COVID and Lyme. I'm having issues with my skin, digestion, and brain. Could Lynn check to see what is going on for me? Thank you. Uh, now I'm I'm a little bit familiar with that, but she would like to see what you could check there, COVID and Lyme disease. Yeah, so Lyme disease. what we just did with Pamela should help because it's vagus nerve work, which is part of the issue. But the second issue is COVID is such a different beast. And I know we're going to talk about that more next month. Yeah. But it literally will activate um, dormant viruses, bacteria, parasites, everything. So it just blows it up. So if you had one cell of cancer, it can blow it up. If you had limes at some point and it's dormant, it will blow it up. I've had people that have had all these different herpes variations after COVID or after their vaccine or whatever, it all comes up because the spike protein goes nuts in the body. And that's one of the things it's been programmed to do. So we can, do you want me to do a, a little process? Yeah. Okay, so let's do a little process. Let me see what her body says is going to be the best one. All right. So Sarah, in your particular uh, situation, the spike protein is somewhat under control. It's what it has activated is more what's not under control. So we are going to work on doing a detox and going through and wiping out some of this limes. So when I do the work, uh, especially in, in groups like this, I'm using the consciousness of Sarah's body. So if you're listening to this, don't go, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not doing this because this is for Sarah. This is really for anybody on the call and whatever energies your body wants and can use, let it take it and the rest is just going to pass right on through. So we're just going to go through, there's different uh, frequencies, there's far infrared there's all different kinds of frequencies that are just kind of pulsing through the body right now that are just doing attacking different parts. Some are attacking the cell membrane of limes. Some are going uh, at it at a different route. Some are doing things to the immune system so that it will start the process of phagocytosis, which is kind of like Miss, Mrs. Pac-Man and eat it up. Uh, some of it is also trying to light it up. So again, parts of your body will know where to find it. So this is one of the biggest problems since COVID. It, it was a problem before, but it's way bigger now where the immune system gets confused and doesn't know what it's looking for. Doesn't know, is that the cell I want or is that the cell I want? And so it, there's a lot of uh, retraining that needs to be done at times. Um, so that's kind of another energy that's in that process. So we'll just let that keep on running until your body wants to turn it off. And it's happening a lot in the brain. So if I were you, if you have an opportunity, I'd lay down for a little while or at least not drive. Let's put it that way. Hmm. 
That is so important. I, I wanted to stay with the last thing you said. Um, we don't do this that often. And honestly, I, I didn't understand it. But after you go through this kind of adjustment, what you just did here, boy, did I, I even felt that. I was like, I'm, I'm trying to get all the messages, you know, to bring on air. But I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, question came in, and I, I know we have a little time. It's um, I just want to make sure we get it to you. So one of the things that, um, question that I get asked, this is a really good question. Dr. Pat. Okay, I've heard you now talk. Oh, geez. I've heard you now. Thank you. I heard you now talk about black mold like four times, and you seem concerned. What is Lynn? What is Lynn? What is Lynn's take on black mold? Everything gets abbreviated in messages. So I think I got you right. Unfortunately, black mold is um, very dangerous because it becomes airborne. And so as you breathe in these spores, they can land in the lungs, they can then get transferred to all over the body and they just bloom. Again, if you have a uh, acidic environment, you're not like super oxygenated. Remember everything in our world is, so I can put 10 people in that room with the black mold right. and maybe this five will have horrific ramifications to that. Maybe these two will feel like they get allergies from it. And maybe these three, they will be unscathed. It all depends on your immune system and how it acts and reacts, how acidic versus alkaline you are, how your body responds. So, you know, that's, I guess, one of the biggest things I want people to hear from all of this. It really depends on your body and its reaction. You know, again, think of COVID. COVID was unusual because everybody went, well, wait a minute, everybody's having different symptoms. It can't be the same thing. You know, this person's having heart problems. This person's having lung problems. This one has digestive issues. We're all over the board, but that's because it was at really attacking the mucous membranes, which you have in many parts of your body. So the same thing with this mold, the mold will get in and it can work its way all over the body, including the brain. So they can call that like um, neuro limes we have, we have neuro EBV, and you can also have neuro fungus where it's all gonna create a major problem in that arena. And you know, one of the biggest issues that I have with the whole mold thing is remediation just seems to be a money-making expedition. And so you really have to get somebody that knows what they're doing and you have to make sure that you're really checking, but yes, and it's expensive. And that's one of the reasons why most of my clients, if they have this situation, they go, you know, it's too expensive, I can't do this. Okay, but imagine what your health is gonna be like in a couple of years, when you continue to live in this, now, you know, you're, you're not able to enjoy the life that you wanted to live and all your money's going to medical bills. So you have to decide where do you want to spend your money? And I'm so glad you brought that up because it really taps into what we've been talking about from the beginning, Lynn. Um, and that is, you, you know, I, I know I wouldn't be alive today if I didn't have an open mind. I know I wouldn't. I mean, Anytime anybody said to me, the like the angel lady said, you should go find a naturopath, right? And I'm like, what? The angel lady? And yes, she did. And she said, you need to find T3. And I looked it up and I found Dr. Darvish, but I didn't need T3. Um, it got me there, though. Openness is key. What you just talked about is just one of the things in our environment. Uh, and thank you, Uh I keep getting messages in and, and I'll just see if I can get this next one up. Um, saying this is second person. I think this is Jeannie asking about this too. Just heard what you said. Um, and so basically, sometimes we have to do things thoroughly, right? Now, I didn't know that, but I know it today. If we stay with what you talked about and what a beautiful way you, you explain mold. There are ways to remediate ourselves and our tissues. And then there are these other ways. The shortcut didn't work for me. Boy, I tried. When it comes to black mold, uh, that is a shortcut for those of you out there thinking you're gonna get your spray bottle of bleach and you're just gonna start spraying or you're gonna shake your clothes out. There are experts in the field that can help you. Just like there are experts like you, Lynn, that we're talking about. 
that's what is important for me and having you on the show. If people did not have to take the 10 years it took for me to heal, I'm all about that. But what you're talking about today is both science, as we talked about, and you're also talking about healing and adjusting for people. And that's, that's always do. been my thing. I try to marry the science and the woo-woo, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you have to do it. And I had to do it. I had to do it on air. And I, we have to do, I have to do it even more and more because what we're talking about here is we're talking about science. And if you choose to take a pathway, which will get you relief and help, that's what you're here for, Lynn. My job is to make people know about you and know who you can help. And any of y'all, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, y'all know that you do not shortcut black mole. But besides that, how do we help people get educated so that we get them to the place where they seek the help that they're gonna need? You know, that's the tough one. Sometimes a lot of people, I hate the term, but I guess it's what's coming up from my younger years are hard headed and they need to get to a certain point in their life before they're willing to be open enough to hear different things. Other people, you know, they're willing to try all these things and each has its own problem because the ones that are willing to literally try anything, they can get led by the nose by all these people and all these things out there that, you know, the shiny sparkly thing that they want to chase. So that's why for me, I'm always trying to teach people uh, about using their own awareness, using getting in touch with your body and use your body as your best friend to go, okay, body. So I have these four choices and actually you always have an unlimited number of choices. So I always add to that. Here's four choices and something else. And so then I'm going, so which one, which one is going to give us our biggest bang for our buck, whether it's a buck in terms of a dollar or a buck in terms of our health or what's going to be more most fun for us, which one, which one should we do? Which one should we try? And you try it. And the other thing is, you know, we've been so taught about commitment in the United States, especially that we get married to every choice we make. And we're, we have this lifelong commitment to it. That's not what it's supposed to be. It's just a choice. We make a choice. We go, okay, I'm going to try this. And then you're like, Ooh, that's not working so well. Okay. Choose something different. Don't stick with that one. Choose something different. Go, wow, that was an interesting lesson. Okay. Let's move along. Let's go over here now and just keep choosing. Yeah. And you know, that's really the thing. I, my hope is that we all don't have to wait to get to a point of desperation that I was yes. at. That's really my hope. That's why since 2004, that has been my mission. Yes, I talk about fun things. Yes, I interview cool people. But the underpinnings of our network in general is to educate, inform, and inspire. And by having you on here, one, thank you so much for a powerful message. But also thank you so much for helping the people you help. Because thank you. And, th and thank you for having me on. And thank you for 20 years. I had a radio show for three years. I know what, what your job <laughs> is like. Okay. It is not easy. It's like herding a bunch of kittens. So congratulations <laughs> on that. But you know, Lynn, what's fascinating about it is six months after I bought my first hour of airtime, by the way, on internet, I'm considered like, what do they call me now? Outside of older pioneer in digital okay. media. That's the nice way to put it. Yeah, they, they call me podcast <laughs> Patty. But the bottom line for me is I couldn't, I was so ill. I never talked about it on air. I could do nothing but buy airtime. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't work. I could just, so long as I could use this part of my body. Yeah. I don't want people to have to go through that if they don't have to. And I know you don't either. Mm -mm. No. Lynn, thank you for today. Well, again, please give out your website and what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? Learn to communicate with your body. I promise you, everybody can do it. We all have that little gut feeling sometimes about different things. Learn to grow that and have gut feelings about all kinds of things throughout the day. And remember, eating is just something we do for the body. Drinking, we do for the body. It's not for the mind. So get your body involved and ask questions and, and make it playtime, not work. And our website again is www.thebodychannel.com. And Lynn will be back 
So kind of make sure you connect with Lynn on your own. Make sure that you're absolutely open to what all of the education she's doing, all of the information, and pay it forward. You know, this is our big pay it forward month. We've been paying it forward for 20 years. Now we believe in paying forward communication and information. Lynn, thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you, Colton, pushing all the right buttons. And thanks to all of you. You're the best audience on the planet. You've asked for more shows like this. As a matter of fact, you were very direct with me in a focus group we ran not too long ago. You said you wanted to bring these conversations back, and we are doing it. Lynn is leading the way. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.